In an ideal world, all smallholder farms would grow enough food to feed their families and have a surplus to sell in the market. But the reality is often very different. An estimated 10 million farming families in East Africa suffer from food insecurity related to a variety of factors. However, a few simple measures like having trees on farms can help meet some of their needs. A unique project launched four years ago in Ethiopia and Rwanda and recently scaled out to Uganda and Burundi has shown that the right trees can do much to improve land health, raise productivity and increase incomes. This project came about because we are looking at cheaper way of increasing crop productivity in areas which have frequent droughts, areas where there is a lot of land degradation, areas where there is, there is also low fertility. And governments are also very keen on having a coefficient methods which are affordable put in place. For example, in Ethiopia there, there was this uh, uh, planting of 100 million Fidebia trees. All the governments we are working with work in, even in Rwanda, they work in on reversing degradation. And trees provide supporting services, they provide other ecosystem services in addition to products uh, like firewood, uh, food as food in terms of fruits, fodder, fiber, all these are services which you get directly and indirectly from trees. There is a story they always tell me these days. When a farmer wants to tell you that they do not have money, they always tell me, I Joel, I'm very sick. I say, oh, well, let me take you to hospital. I say, no, the disease I'm suffering from is pocket polio. <laughs> and they later on learn that actually pocket polio is poverty. That's what they are trying to mean. Yes, yeah, so I would want that to, to change. Yeah, and probably they say, I'm now recovered from pocket polio. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we would want to see the farmer's livelihoods improve. You know, they're able to, to eat what they want. They're able to eat the meals that they, they would want to have at the end of the day. Um, so those are the things that we, we anticipate this project will contribute to. Trees play a vital role in smallholder farms. In many cases, something as simple as lack of firewood may keep a family hungry. In such a, in such a discussion, you would be having women they will be witness, because like me, just walk away, take my time and look at my watch. It is time for lunch. I just say, hey, you people, what have you prepared? But they will say there is no food, there was no firewood. Then I say all this time, I see if a tree can grow in hours to prepare food for me. But it is women now suffering. That is the first and the foremost thing. However, firewood is only one of many products provided by trees on farms. Manafa is part of the Mount Elgon sub-region in Uganda, which is found in uh, eastern Uganda on the slopes of Mount Elgon. I think the seventh uh, big tallest mountain in Africa. So there are, like any mountainous area, Manafa has a number of challenges. It's a very fragile ecosystem. There is soil and water erosion. Uh, people have cut a lot of the tree cover. Also the system is the, the coffee banana system. And so the, the people have sort of lost most of the tree cover. And there is now loss of soil fertility. Look at that here. That hill, it was a thick natural forest. If I tell you to move from here up to that forest, you will not come back. The darkness will force you to sleep there. Maybe you'll come the following day when you are tired, maybe. Eh? But right now, even if you are here, I can go back, I can go up to top and you look at me, then I come back here. Just in 30 minutes, I'll be here. Across the border in Rwanda, Poor agricultural practices on steep slopes frequently leads to severe soil erosion and declining fertility. Rwanda is called uh, one, a country of 1,000 hill. When you say 1,000 hill, it means 1,000 slope, which uh, where the soil is washed in, in the river.
there is a reduction of soil fertility due to the erosion which wash out this light mineral like calcium, magnesium, nitrogen, phosphorus and leave this heavy metal like aluminium, like ferrous so that when you add the biomass you increase organic matter and you increase the capacity of soil to hold this mineral and to hold also water. The success of the Trees for Food Security project has been based on providing farmers with a range of tree species for a range of services. Trees actually provide a number of products and services that contribute directly to food security. Um, for example, some of the trees are fruits. And so this can help directly the mangoes, the oranges, the avocados, and the purples. This directly helps to improve the nutrition within the households. We also give trees that are helping farmers to improve soil fertility, uh, control soil erosion, and so this in turn will be able to improve crop yields. And when we improve crop yields, then we shall be, the farmer will be having enough food and also having access for, for sale. And we provide also uh, fertilizer trees uh, like uh, Arinus, like Cassia um, uh, angustissima, uh, Arinus nepalensis, and uh, Vernonia. Those species we use them to improve soil fertility through incorporation of leaf biomass. We started by, you know, identifying the local knowledge. So by building on the existing local agroecological knowledge and by uh, facilitating participatory approach, farmers identified their demands. Within the project, we have tried to integrate what we call low-hanging fruits, uh, things that bring in immediate, some quick gains sh within short term and medium term. So in the short term, what we have done is um, giving farmers some of the, the, sh the fast growing trees, say like shrubs, that are directly contributing into the, the livestock fodder. So they are already harvesting the fodder and feeding it to the animals. And so they are already seeing some kind of um, immediate benefits from that because there are programs that are giving farmers uh, livestock through government and so feeding animals is one of the problems, especially during the dry season. In Rwanda, we managed to protect the like Karago uh, using uh, progressive terraces and we stop, uh, we reduce the soil erosion. With the tree planting, at least within our district here, Mbare and Manafa. Ladies have come in so much, they are very much interested and they are happy with their work. They earn. They earn. The extra income from the sale of avocado and other grafted fast-growing fruits has meant that many women like Clemina have been able to invest in health insurance for their families. Other small-scale organisations set up to help struggling women, like Elgin Women's Trust, have transformed lives. As we began, there were some things we were not knowing, like making sheds. We were just leaving the things just without sheds, but they taught us how to make sheds, measurements and so on. So we acquired that knowledge, then grafting, we had no oranges and so on, but now we are able to make because of the knowledge we got from the group. Then also, this group has helped people. It is used as a study center. Some people come here for learning. As ladies, Joel, as you came and you found us, it is not as we were. Uh, we've now changed as you see us. You found me without hair. But because of this, you see ladies are looking nice. They are able to earn a living, support their families, paying school fees. Now, when you go somewhere for a loan, it is very easy. They just come, look around, and you're able to sign for something. So it has helped us so much. Just across the street, Iyanya and her husband were able to establish a private tree nursery after a year of casual work at the Trust. We could see that they were earning good money from the nursery, so we decided to make our own nursery. But we didn't have enough money for the potting tubes. We had to think on our feet what to do. 
so my husband thought of those plastics from the bar. We started to collect them and use them for our seedlings. I only mind the strong smell of the alcohol when we cut them, but look at where we are today. The Trees for Food Security project encourages farmers to increase crop yields in an environmentally friendly way. Scientists have been carrying out participatory as well as long-term trials with over 5,000 farmers across the countries. Results on food crops such as teff, maize and wheat show that the species as well as the management of trees plays a crucial role in yields. Under the, the prune trees, uh, we got 4.2 tons per hectare of maize, green maize. Uh, and when the, prune, the, the trees are not pruned, we got 2.4 uh, tons per hectare. There is a lot of uh, huge differences, yield differences. In Ethiopia, it was found that wheat yields increased under the Fadeherbia albida tree. The Fadeherbia supported more yield under unpruned rather than pruned trees in contrast to the Grevillea robusta in Rwanda. My name is Alain Dolly, a research assistant to CIMIT, hosted by ICRAF Rwanda. In the framework of Trees for Food Security projects, we did research on tree crop interactions uh, in semi-arid areas of Rwanda and humid highlands. And briefly what we found out is that there was no yield reduction at 3 meters for most of the species. And more interestingly, for some species like Alna Sacuminata, we could have a yield increase of 20% of maize yield, like say four, from 4 tons to 5 tons per hectare. Switching from napier grass to trees as stakes have also helped to significantly increase the yields of climbing beans in Rwanda, directly benefiting over 100 farming families. Rwandans actually they eat beans than more than any crops in in Rwanda. For them, it is actually a wonderful solutions for their livelihoods. One of the other challenges we, we faced was high expectations. You get farmers really looking forward to how do I benefit in the sh very quickly. And so you know the challenge with trees, you don't benefit the next week you planted the seedling. So you have to be patient and uh, teach people and uh, take them through the time it will take to get the benefits. So that was a bit of a challenge related to rotation, but. Uh, with fruit trees, they are quick to see the fruiting in the short term, one and a half years, already they are seeing fruits, and so the hope is high. And uh, apart from really that high expectation and the number of people that wanted to join, the rest really got very good reception, and uh, I attribute it to the need that they were really feeling about the challenge that they face. Rural resource centres and nurseries established by the project have played a vitally important role when it comes to training researchers, local government staff and farmers in agroforestry practices, as well as providing seeds and seedlings. So in this nursery site, we produce a lot of seedlings, especially uh, fruit seedlings and also uh, different uh, forest seedlings also uh, we produce uh, for conservation purposes, for soil and water conservation purposes, different seedlings. So we distribute uh, yearly more than a million of seedlings. In many areas where water was identified as a major problem for plant growth, the project also helped with water wells. In the process of sharing and learning with farmers, many beneficial practices have been discovered in what Joel Buyinza describes as innovative practices. Uh, this one farmer, uh, whom I used to think was just a born, uh, would tell the farmer that you know you have to plant uh, this spacing, and literally he reverses it. He say, okay, when you plant Kaliandra, cut it at this height. Somehow he cuts at his own uh, height. And when you look on, you're thinking, okay, is this being stubborn or something? However, later on, I actually learned that this farmer is being innovative. 
and some of those innovations are now being taken up by the project because they work. So it is something unique I've found that while we would want farmers to do what we have discovered as researchers, the farmers, okay, their farms are also uh, experimental units and they have been able to learn as researchers themselves on their own farms. And these are, as, these are things that we've later realized that they have practiced, they have tried here, they have tried there, and at the end of the day he draws a conclusion and says this is what will work. And some of those innovations from the farmers we've been able to take them up as a project. So far, over 23,000 farmers have benefited from the project by adopting agroforestry practices and planting trees on their farms. One of my greatest joys is to see when you visit farmers in the field, they are happy. And you know, farmers are our ambassadors. We are using their farms as, as experiments, so to speak. And so when you go to a farm and you see it transformed, at the beginning of the experiment period, there were few trees. And you see a farmer trying out different technologies. For example, in Ethiopia, you see farmers are now growing uh, improved avocados. They are able actually to do the grafting themselves. I can see the fruits of the training we have had in farmers. I can see take up of technologies and even neighboring farmers wanting to know what uh, the farmers we are working with are doing. So that is very, very gratifying. It's impact. Together we can achieve more. And in this regard, we've been able to achieve all this through our good working relationships with our partners, especially the World Agroforestry Center, and most importantly, the ICRAF Uganda office, with whom we've planned all these things together, implemented and supported each other along the way. Whatever problems came about in uh, getting out to farmers, advising them, moving together in one voice, farmers even believe you more, they see the cause is one and supported by different stakeholders. So moving forward, we look to continued collaboration and strengthening each other to address the problems that affect the farmers that we serve.